Welcome to the BTC show. For this episode, I had Evans. So we had a conversation around um, marketing and comms in the new workplace. So we had a message for for the newest generation in the workplace. As at this time, it's either Gen Zs or Gen Alphas. So you have to watch to hear the message for you. But the good thing is that we talked about marketing and comms and how brands and individuals can be able to maximize um, their own strengths to get results. Okay, so you should listen. You should yeah, watch. you should. Young man, good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> How's it been? It's really been a while. I've not been on this show before. So normally what I would have done was give you a coconut to break. But I'm concerned about your mental health. <laughs> How does that affect my mental health? Because <laughs> the trauma of breaking a coconut. Oh, believe era, me, it's... It's something else. And I don't want to be part of... Oh, that, 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 that's, that's what you think. Yeah. That's your assumption. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I love coconuts and I think I'm used to breaking the coconut. So it would be used, nice to have it. Uh, it used to be violent. Because hmm? breaking is violent. It depends on how you use it. I mean, if you're skilled, you wouldn't have to... Uh, do it violently, you can still manage to do it somehow and get the hold of it. Good to have you, but <laughs> Thanks for hosting me. So interestingly, um, one of the main conversations I want us to have is the changes in the workplace, marketing and comms, and I've seen you as the guy that has the eyes, the head, that understands trends, and looking at the way um, we are having influencers, platforms, um, marketing and comms going in a different direction in 2024, 2025 and beyond. What's your own bad, bad view? Okay, um, uh, it's a tough question, uh, but I mean, I think to answer that, you have to look at what has been yeah. and then what is. And what might be, and uh, um, there are, it's 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 the field is quite vast, so I don't know where to zero in exactly. I'm just going to pick on some certain few points and maybe talk about it. Um, take for instance, uh, there's always, of course, the um, the whole of AI and how it's changing everything we are doing right now as re as regards um, work and also, of course, communications and even marketing. You also have to look at the um, the whole new trend behind the content creation. As a form of marketing in today's world, so I also have to look at, say, uh, probably. Oh, um, let's let's start with those two. Okay. Because, um, take for instance, um, content creation. Five years ago, marketing meant uh, being able to be popular with messages for ads, um, web content, uh, content for billboards and uh, the, um, OOH advertising. That was marketing in a sense. And of course, there was TV, there was radio. But now when you talk marketing, uh, most times people now look at it as social media content. Yeah. So within the, five, within the last five years, a lot has changed. It's, it's a big shift. You know, and uh, in a way, it makes you ask the question, what is actually happening? This is no longer uh, uh, what it used to be. So how do we now predict or project what could be in the future? You know. And uh, I was having, I've been having an interesting conversation last week uh, with a friend where he was talking about how marketers now believe that when it comes to metrics, what you used to judge performances now is mostly about visibility, no longer about conversions. And we're like, I mean, That's back true. in the day, uh, I, I, I might told him that it's it's true, but looking at it from the fact that it's true makes it be problematic because it it doesn't exactly cover the entire story, okay? Because I mean. We used to have marketing as a marketing broad field covering being able to being able to get people to do what we want them to do. But now that marketing has been broken down into you have sales, you have advertising, you have a um, you have a, the new marketing, then you have branding in a sense anyway. So now you have four different fields. So those that are now the new or what I call new marketing, first is just as mostly content creators. Which is a bit sad because content and communication should be different from marketing. I mean, they are about the same thing, but still different. Because uh, marketing is all about being able to, with the right message, uh, um, get someone to do what you want them to do. It's not exactly advertising. Advertising has to do with uh, being able to pay, be able to have access to an audience. 
it's whole different uh it does this very thin line between them the marketing now covers what you are saying to them that'll get them to do what you want them to do you know so for the most part people that are marketers used to uh, cover both advertising uh, both sales because of course guys these things have to require you to be good at marketing but these marketers prefer to just be all about content creation so if you can be able to come up with stuff for um, TikTok content or Instagram careers content, you're a marketer, and uh, it's it's Is it worrying and also a bit annoying. Annoying because I wouldn't call myself an OG, yeah. not you know. But I think uh, for someone that was brought up in uh, those old ways, in a sense, I still find it a little bit annoying. Because it has to be something much more than this. The world is much more than just TikTok and IG. What's the world? Because TikTok and IG is a tool. Is a tool. Is a tool of this era. And um, like you said, you don't want to sound like an OG, but don't we think they're getting results and we should listen to them? And don't you think we're the ones trying to um, make them feel left out? Don't you think that this is what this is how the world has evolved to and we should align compared to asking them to align? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the world is going there, but it creates a bias. It tries to make you see the world as see if it only exists on social media, which is uh, both uh, fallacious and also wrong. Yeah, because um, the percentage of the world population that is on social media is not even up to fifty percent. Okay. Okay, so uh, seeing the entire world as being only on TikTok or Instagram is problematic because what happens to the other ones that are not on social media? And then on social media, I like to think that uh, uh, people are doing what the owners want us to do. Which is so, much. Yeah. So while you may think that, oh, because we have um, TikTok now and uh, Instagram now, uh, marketing is all about the uh, viral content. You know? What if tomorrow another owner comes with a different entire idea that requires you to move away from video content? Now it's the marketing owner have to tilt. Now that's why it's a problematic. That's why it's problematic because if we now define marketing based on what these founders want us to do, we never really know what marketing is because tomorrow is going to change. Tomorrow can be oh, if you know how to dance, you're a marketer. <laughs> so so dancing to... is not part of marketing. <laughs> it, it, is, it is not. It's not because you're not communicating, you're not really getting it right. But you get traffic. That's the problem. Now, they find marketing which, in terms of social media traffic. That's, that's the issue. That, that's the issue I have with today's new marketers. Uh, I mean, this interesting group group of marketers, we call it the uh, marketers therapy, we normally come, come, come together to talk about uh, the issues we face in the industry. Uh, it's, more like, it's more like a group therapy, so we talk about the issues you're facing. Someone else will probably give you uh, an idea on what to, how to tackle it, and we'll cry together, and we'll get over it. And so, People now focus on, oh, my content went viral today. I got uh, uh, 2 million impressions. And I've achieved my quota for the month. I'm like, so how does that transform into sales? And I'll show you why. Last week, we discussed uh, last year, this ad by, I've got of that company. I hired a Snoop Dogg okay. to, do, uh, to yeah. do an ad for them, saying that he's quitting smoking. Yeah. And then now they were not, they were not marketing uh, smokeless uh, uh, pots, whatever. Yeah. And uh, the ad went viral. I mean, the ad had... Lots of podcasts and TV shows discussing it week in, week out. So much that they got up to 60,000 followers in the very same week it came out. They spent more. But they did not make any sales from that. So what do you think happened? That people didn't believe them? <laughs> Is it, that's, 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 that's the question. Smoking. <laughs> that's the question. So uh, uh, we, we, had, we, had, we, had, we analyzed that different um, incident for weeks. So I think uh, there are two or three problems. First of all, audience was wrong. Who was meant to be the audience? Uh, wrong as per se, there was no really actual audience fit. The idea was interesting and was nice, and that's the problem. If you don't, if you, that it's interesting and nice doesn't really mean that it's going to put into sales. Convert. Yeah. Convert. It was nice. I mean, Snoop Dogg is known to be a chain smoker. If he says that he's going to have to quit smoking, who will talk about deal. it? It was a big deal. Why didn't so? Right, he's an influencer. People that love him for what he is are people that are diehard smokers. Now, they smoke not because they, they, they have anything they're fighting or they want to get hold because they actually love smoking. Now, you're telling them that uh, Snoop Dogg quit smoking because of um, smokeless sports. They believe what does that even mean? They know it's not true. And then how does that help them? They are smoking because they want to enjoy the thrill. So they are, they should, what, how does smokeless help them exactly? I don't get it. 
And then there was also there was lack of um product influencer fit. Okay. This product is um a smokeless grill in a sense that should be for families. Snoop Dogg doesn't really portray the idea of a family person. There's no familial value within his whatever he as influencer possesses, you know. So both the message he's trying to pass across and both his audience doesn't really match the audience of the company and what they send up as values. And so people that saw it talked about the trend, but then that was just really that's 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 then after after a month, there was no money, and they burnt money on that ad. CEO was sacked. The heads of the company were sacked, you know, and that was just that was it. And so it bought, it begs the question. Okay, so it's it's content now marketing, and that's 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 why I brought it up. So it was content. It trended. It went viral. It gave them impressions. Gave them six thousand followers, but did not sell. So oh, now, they have, oh, they have done better. Sorry. So I think, uh, first of all, the idea why Beautiful wasn't for the brand to execute. Okay. Uh, you, they, they needed to have checked properly to know that they, this idea actually matches, it as an actual fit handshake before they could go ahead with it. It was a beautiful idea, but wasn't the brand to execute. And when they did that, of course, because it was a beautiful idea, it sold, but then there was no money. So what would I have, what could I have done? I would have probably channeled that traffic to something else entirely, but not that particular item to try to sell. It just didn't make sense. He's a, he's a smoker and then smokeless grill. Yes, but where's the connect? I don't see it. Money burnt. So you felt they were just more interested in, they didn't do a connect. They were more interested in um, the influencer being a smoker. And they, uh, more, I, they, they loved the idea of the content going viral. That was what that was okay, where I was okay, bringing I us think, back to. You know, so okay, okay, I get that. The, um, marketing now, the, the trend now is all about virality, you know, social media content. And I'm like, uh, should we really be focused on this or more or less on the actual point of marketing to get people to actually convert and, you know, buy something? You know, so when we tend to tilt towards that angle, as everybody is going towards now, everybody's going towards now, marketing is content, viral content, also a trend on TikTok, Instagram that will blow up, you know, get people talking. Is it really doing what it's supposed to do? We're not sacrificing conversion in the water of virality. So how do we convert? Good how question. do we get out from the box of being a viral content without getting results? Because it's like sensation. At the end of sensation, we don't get results. How do we make sure we align and win from the two sides of this coin? Yeah, good question. So uh, I think uh, the problem is in the fact that today's marketers are are not exactly as good as they are supposed to be. So I, I like to use the term, um, well, let me not say that word. So I'm not as fruitless. Okay. So, but they're not really as good as they are meant to be uh, because now everyone thinks that that's another issue. Everyone thinks that if you can talk, if you have access to a camera or audience, that you're a marketer. So you see influencers that shouldn't actually be influencers, be influencers. We'll talk about that in a bit, you know, so about Marketing requires understanding your audience, understanding your product, your business, and your brand, being able to marry four of them. Your audience, your brand, your product. Your people, your audience, your brand, your product. Yeah. Okay. Being able to marry, even the business as well, because sometimes business and brand are actually two different things. Okay. I'll explain shortly, hopefully. So being able to marry all four of them, that's, that's, that's what makes you an actual world, world-shaped, world-rounded marketer. So if all you know about is your content ideas, it's a problem because if the idea doesn't fit the product or the business or the brand or the audience, you won't sell. It's going to go viral as all good social media content does. We're going to be happy about it, talk about it, laugh about it, but where is the money? Where's the conversion problem? I would, I mean, I'll, I'll, let me, let, let's bring a story up now. If you've heard about what happened the last day, it's probably halftime show. Yeah. Kanye West. The crazy ad they did. My friend uh, came to me, Evan, so what do, you have, what, what do you make of this? And I was like, I mean, one thing it tells me is that you don't have to have a beautiful idea to get an ad, an advert to convert. I always say this, you know, say this, once you have the right placement and the right budget, even the wackiest advert would sell. Today, what we spoke on Twitter is because today was an adv advert that CarryWise put up. They just went to a billboard, last billboard, just wrote CarryWise.com. You know, is it converting? What is this? What is it like? He's doing his job. 
Okay. Like actually seeing it and at the level that Carrie Wise is in right now, they can actually afford to do that. Because they've already done they've already spread awareness. Right now they're trying to do uh retaining, get people to remember the brand name, which is gonna help them to get a uh, market share in the long run. So Kanye West, he didn't need to do an advert because the placement was right. The product was right. Then of course he himself, the brand, it wasn't about Yeezy issues, it was about him himself. He himself was right. So he ain't coming to talk about, oh, and I've got shoes though, you know, <laughs> go to why is it uh he went there and he sold 19 million when he only sp spent 7 million on the on the placement, made 19 million profits in a day. That is it. No wonderful idea, no pff, just get your work done. So because he understood his market, understood his audience, understood the placement and his brand, was able to pull it off. Someone that new marketers now we only think about oh content content is the issue with Gen Z in the workplace. They don't they don't think about everything. They focus on what they think it's everything. Social media, is TikTok. This a, is this a Gen Z thing? I, I don't think that is most that because the older generation see the world beyond mm. social media. You know, and when it's beyond social media, you don't you don't fall into that bias of thinking that oh everything is this mm. because now you are looking at things from a different perspective. You know, are doing a, a third level thinking. Yeah. Right, so but Gen Z's they grew up on social media, so they tend to think that that is where the entire world is. begins and ends. So to them, if they can get the content to go viral, they have done marketing. But well, that's not true. That's not true. You know, and so that that's the problem. You know, that's what the most problem. Yeah. So fast, you're sounding so old school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, I was brought up with in in that with that 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 that's in their ways. I'm not old school. No, 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 no. I was just putting it away. But it's good. It's good. It's good. I like it. Um, now, the challenge I have is that um, I like the fact that this is your point of view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, the concern is that we would tilt to things that will give us results because results work. But um, I've always had it at the back of my mind that somehow social media is sensation and it's more like um, the sensation might not get you resolved. And if we're also going to look at metrics, metrics are not conversion every time, we might be playing in circles. Exactly. So how do you think, um, um, how do you think you'd, you could help influencers who are becoming brands who have numbers and who um, believe that their numbers speak for them and small businesses who um, who won the TikTok likes? Who will go and dance to get figures? And because the brand, the brand would ask me how many views do I have, and if I could dance and and do anything to give them, you know, I have views. So how do we, how do we merge it to be a complete, three sixty degree marketing professional, that we claim to be, get results, get the viral views, and still be relevant and have a biz without um, doing too much. Okay, and um, really good question there. So it's part of why I had began by saying that it's it's it behoves on the marketer to understand the product, the brand, the business, the audience, and because no two businesses are the same, no two brands are the same, no two marketing briefs are the same. And I'm going to tell you this for a fact, right? So and I say this because there are some level and some businesses that that dancing around on TikTok is what they need to actually go forward. Okay, so you see. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's, so that, that's the point, it's dicey. <laughs> but there are some that do not need that. So first thing first, I'm, I, I can't, I'm, I'm a product marketer. That's where I am currently. Yeah. And the very first headache that you as a marketer has to, well, manage or handle for a new brand is to get them product market fits. Okay. At that level, you don't need dancing around. So that's the mistake that the people that are created, the worst new dark adverts created is a new brand. They've not even gotten customers. They're trying to get virality. You know, you so don't need like that's, that's not what their basic yeah. is. You have you have to first of all find your audience. Yeah. And when I said it's actually important because um product market fit is a very, very dicey, dicey question and dicey question. Because you can see four brands doing the very same thing, but they appeal to different audiences or they mean different things to them. And I would explain if I should name brands, seller, page stack, um, can even bring in photo wave. They probably do the very same thing. Okay. Finance fintech. Stella is focused on digital creators. They found their markets there. 
you know, Paystack is looking at mostly SMEs. It's found the market. I mean, it used to be for everybody, but now that, of course, not being sort of a, a, the bank to SMEs in a sense, found their market there. Flutterwave has found its own market at its own level. So they're doing the same thing, but the mean difference is different people. They've all found their audiences. Now, what do you think your product or your business might be doing or mean different from what the audience actually sees it for? I saw a video yesterday where someone was talking about how uh, they showed two women in, in, in this market trying to buy frying pan. One was trying to check if you can easily toss something. Now I was checking if you can hit someone with it on the head. You know, it's same frying pan, but it means different things to both of them. Now, understanding... You should hold the one that is trying to see if it can. I thought someone that actually, that, that one that's trying to hit actually is a better customer because first of all, the frying pan will be getting spoiled. You can be going to come back to buy more and more and more and more. Okay. So the value, <laughs> the last value of that particular woman is actually quite high. I'd rather even optimize for her because that frying pan feels spoiled tomorrow. And she'll come again to buy another one. You know, but then that, that one apart. So the point is, once you find your audience, it's not easy to play around. Okay. Find the audience first of all. Get that particular PMF where you already have a, a an, an engine that is generating money or users. Okay. So now you've already gotten people to know about your product, what you what what it means to them. They've already understood that particular point in their head, in their minds, where this product actually appears. The next thing is now to stay in their head. Keep on playing around this particular message over and over and over again. That is where dancing now comes into play. Because now you want one to remember you, to think about you. So dancing is not the first strategy. It should be strategy two or three. Exactly. When, when they've, once they've known me. Once they've known you, they've known what you mean so to wait, them. Stand up, let's dance. <laughs> Are you a bad dancer? This will not stand go Stand up, well. let's dance. This, this will not go this, well. Are you a bad dancer? <laughs> so, so it doesn't need to work. Are you a very bad dancer? This will not go well. So let's dance. This is how to dance. <laughs> So this is how to dance. So this is how this is how it to go by now. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Good I have to pull you out. <laughs> nice but, one. But, but 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 I hear you. I hear you. So so let's um let's do it. Let's do a round off of um what um, marketing and comms is and what's your own feedback to new brands to um how to also manage these Gen Zs who whether we like it or not they are the that the new face of the workplace. I feel that there are kids that need direction. Yes. And at the stage, we were like that. So um, the reason why whatever you say would help shape their mindset is because um, you were once like them and maybe someone was able to hold your hands or someone was able to point the direction. So how, um, how do we make it easy for them? How do we make it easy for those ahead of them? And how do we also win so that we also don't um, channel all our energy in the wrong direction? Uh, so uh, it boils down to the leaders. The leaders of the of the companies in a sense because these people are even like me we need direction okay. now uh, because we don't submit much to learning and we are not exactly um fully baked in a sense you know we need someone to keep on pushing us towards the right direction okay i'll give you an example myself when i was younger this is not even this is not even far back two years ago i used to live most on assumptions okay I had a boss that told me ever i know you are smart i know you think very, very strategically, which means you are mostly correct. But then I want us to be backing our plans or statements with actually actual data. data so helpful. now, even when I'm convinced, I give it a month or two to back it up with data. Okay. It Good. helps me to be lots more focused, a bit to actually understand. I wouldn't even like I've seen more things, more insights than I wouldn't have seen if I had gone ahead to base, uh, work on my base on my, on my assumption. Okay. But it took my leader really, really pointing me towards this to get there. Okay. You know, so I think one of the issues we have with this is, but leaders are, are now following vanity metrics, and it's because I mean you have investors pushing money into them, and they have a lot of money to burn. Yeah. So now they no longer really, they no, they no longer really, really, really focused on making money with the little they have. They're just burning money. Truth is, when you have enough money, you can actually solve any problem. Yeah. Question is now, how much money do you spend? But enough money can actually solve any problem. You know. So, but our market has always been how to do more with less. Okay. Yeah, so um, if the leaders can be able to hold it down together. I mean, focus and guide these younger ones towards understanding that beyond these vanity metrics, could have you could still do that and still generate results at the same time. You don't have to sacrifice results or conversion on the author of vanity metrics. Okay. It's all about the leaders being able to guide them together. Okay. So what's your final say, Gen Z? <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, Gen I, I used to be like them. Yeah, or Gen Alphas. <laughs> Gen Alphas are still too young that's coming up. I don't think they've entered that world of marketing. It will shock you. It will shock you that they've also entered. Just that they, they might be the ones that are doing the social marketing, um, uh, that the ones that are working, that your customer care, holding the phones, 
in this part of the world in this part of the world well i would say to young guys if you are, if you are watching you are seeing me don't worry don't come after you <laughs> you were once like that <laughs> submit yourself to process okay this you think it's hard to submit yourself to process it is hard it is hard but you have an undue advantage you are young yeah. most of us most of people are people, people above me they learned what i know now at an older age Okay. Because there was no internet, there was no social media. They had to grind out these results. But you, you have the results there open for you to learn from. So follow the process. Try. It's going to be hard, but try. Try and follow the process. You know, just take your time. Understand the nitty-gritty of things. Understand why this is so. First principles. And then slowly grind out results from it. You can also now combine both your entire, you know, virality and content ideas with the actual right thing to do that's just about it thank you evans for your time don't worry um uh, you're not you're not an old g you're not an angry old. <laughs> i'm still young girl. no you um i i the main reason why i did this was that um people listen more when they see people who have results who are like them so for instance i know very well that um if an older person is talking the younger ones feel you don't know what you're saying but if a younger person like them is speaking who has results, they listen. A little bit more. Yeah, they really talk to me like, this guy is saying, he, he knows what he's saying. Like you said, you will go through the process, facts. You have to use facts well to, to run with this generation. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your insights. It was good having you. Thank you, awesome, man. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, next time I won't have to dance again like today. No, no, don't. <laughs> dance the one. I didn't know I could dance. <laughs>